everyone. So I'm going to be doing a mini mukbang video eating show. Um, I'm not feeling too good, so my voice is a little raspy, but uh, I'm going to be trying Cinnabon's Gooey Bites. Um, and apple cider from Thornton's. So the Cinnabon Gooey Bites are at Thornton's. They're $1.99, which is a great deal. And since I'm not feeling good, <clears throat> the cider really does help with making my throat feel better. Um, so yeah, they just rolled these out today. Um, I stopped by last night to pick up like what I get. I forgot what I get last what I got last night, but um. They're like, yeah, they're gonna have the bites tomorrow. So I went and got them. They come in this little plastic, don't judge. I've, I've already opened it up. Little plastic cup with a uh, plastic covering it. Yeah, that's what they look like. Uh, they're pretty good. Um, They're like a great little mini breakfast. They're um, pretty dense because I'm not like a cinnamon person, but I just don't like dry bread and cinnamon. It's not good. But it's a pretty good um, like sweet bread morning breakfast thing. Um, I'm trying the apple cider because there's a YouTuber named Peter Mon who's from Indianapolis. I'm in Louisville, Louisville, Kentucky. And he has a great channel. I'll put it in the description box, but he's been going on and on and on about this cider. That's what I went to go get last night was actually the cider. <laughs> um, but I hadn't tried it, so I automatically put in caramel syrup, which was a bad idea because it's already like sweet enough by itself. So I got some more today. It's pretty sweet and it's pretty tart. But it has like the right blend of each. So yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, also, just got this phone case from eBay, but I don't know if you guys can see this. It's got like a little, it doesn't close right here. So I send the company an email and they're gonna send out another one. But yeah, it would have been perfect if it wasn't for this little part that just doesn't snap together. It kind of broke off. But they have like super cute phone cases. It's three pieces. It's the back part, the rubber part that surrounds the phone, and then the top part. Um, but yeah. It's super cute, it's sturdy, it's pretty thick, um, but it feels good in the hand. <laughs> That's my Snapchat pick. Oh my god. So yeah, if you haven't checked out um, Peter Mon, he's pretty new to the YouTube drama channel universe, but... I love how he just keeps it real. Um, although he's made some videos about Trisha Paytas, and I heart her so much because she's just like my favorite YouTube person ever. And he was talking about how they're gonna go to parties together, and he was like fanboying over her. And now I think because of like some of his videos. 
he and her have like lost a connection that they were like slowly building, which is kind of sad because we all in our heads like wish and hope one day that, you know, we can make some connection somewhere with somebody on a certain level. And yeah, I think he pretty much ruined that. Mm -mm. Also, all this beauty guru drama is just really annoying. Um, I remember when you could only find information about makeup was going to the library and using the decimal system to find five books about makeup. Now everybody and their mama thinks that just because, oh, they threw on some eyeshadow and whatnot on somebody's face that they're like a makeup artist. Being a makeup artist takes so much time and effort and talent and understanding and knowledge. I'm not really trying to crack on anybody's like ambition. However, like don't call yourself one until you've actually had some type of training. That's just like people that do hair in the kitchen can't technically call themselves a hairstylist because they didn't go to school for it. Yeah, you don't have to go to school to work in a makeup counter, but they also have their own types of school. So until like you've got some type of certification, um, license, um, don't start throwing around that term because it just it cheapens the work of what other people have been doing. Um, I kind of wish we go back to like the original creators like Ben Nye, um, Kevin Aquan, just people that pioneered the industry way before YouTube ever got a hold of it because those people were the ones that the innovators the creators the actual real artists they're like leonardo um they're just like so original and people need a, a fundamental understanding of how makeup came to be and how to actually apply it from these artists because they're the ones that oh my god practically came up with the techniques that we're using now it's not kim kardashian his makeup artist learned what highlight and contour from somebody else who learned it from somebody else who learned it from somebody else and the original people i feel like need to be respected or remembered or talked about more often <clears throat> Because it's just, it's sad to see the art just cheapen, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if you guys agree with me or disagree. But leave in the comments below. Um, but yeah, all in all, the little bites are pretty good. I mean, would I get them again? I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, don't knock it till you try it, but I'm going to have to try this maybe a couple more times. Maybe when they're more fresh. No. Maybe it needs to be more cold outside. I'm not getting the whole fall effect, even though I'm eating like two things that have cinnamon in it, and I don't really eat cinnamon that often. Um, I'll probably continue to get the Eiffel, 
the, the apple cider because it does make my throat feel better and it's pretty good I don't know what do you guys think about how's everybody feeling about Jeffree Star <coughs> and Patrick and Manny MUA I like Manny he's he's cool people um I think it's kind of sad that he's emulating Jeffrey though because <sighs> just like I want him to be his own person you know he's got it's like he's got to develop himself and not subject himself to like being around um people like Jeffrey I don't have any of his products I wanted to get some and he's really never come out and apologized for any of his past actions he's never said uh, he's never verified he never said oh yeah I did that and I'm sorry he may have said like yeah I'm sorry you feel that way which is not technically an apology um, I mean his products are amazing but <sighs> there are way more um, products out there that have good reputations. I'm really interested in um, cosmetic lines created by women of color. I know there's the eyeshadow palettes um, that are like African and Egyptian inspired. I know there's a line called Dollhouse, which is a makeup line created by an um, African American woman. Like, I just want a moment in time where just women of every ethnicity have colors for them. And that's probably going to have to come from, like, women of color actually making our own lines of cosmetics. And I feel like that's probably something that's going to happen relatively soon. Maybe, like, in... I don't know... The next 10, hopefully not 15 years. I feel like that's too long of a wait, but in the next like five to 10 years, I need for <coughs> black women, Latino women, Asian women, Indian women, Native American women, um, to come out with colors of foundations of Highlight contour kits, eyeshadow palettes, um, skincare products that work for our skin. Because um, there's just a lot of stuff that just does not work for us. And why is it that Estee Lauder owns, obviously the Estee Lauder counter, um, Clinique, Bobbi Brown, MAC, and MAC is like one of the only ones that can cater to most women of color like if it's if all the makeup's being manufactured by the same <laughs> manufacturing companies why can we not have more shades how many times if you, if you work at a counter or if you work in makeup how many times have you heard somebody say oh my god where's the fashion fair <laughs> fashion fair is just i've swatched it a couple of times um, while I've worked in makeup and I just, but women loved it and now you can't find it because like the company just like dissolved and some women find it really hard to try to go to other brands to find their shade. Why is Maybelline, is it Maybelline match me, fit me? doing better in color matching than most counters out here in malls. What's that about? Like, what? why can we not cater to everyone? I don't understand. 
Like, if you look up videos of makeup, there are a ton of women of color that use cosmetics. Why is it that we have to, like, <clears throat> go to all these different brands to find what we need? Yeah, like, every brand has something awesome to offer. However, why can't every counter cater to everyone? I, I don't understand. I, this is, it's baffled me for years. <sighs> I feel like I probably have to mix my foundation shades, but I don't want to because it's one more extra step that I, I actually hate doing. Like, why do I have to mix a shade when there are so many colors for medium tones? But there's like, you know, there's always two options for black women. There's like Michael Jackson black, and then there's like that brown that has too much red in it. Like, I just... <sighs> so, I, I'll probably be doing, like, videos on... Cosmetic lines created by women of color because we just... We've got to get ourselves out there and known. <clears throat> We've got to share information because, like... The perfect shade is probably out there. It's just... It doesn't have the exposure yet. So I think with like some of the videos I'm going to be doing, I want to shine a light on women that are actually creating products so everybody can be included. Like, retail is, brick and mortar business model is almost on its way out. People are using e-commerce. Like, I've shopped on Instagram many times and I've never really had a problem except for one item. It was the right product, just the wrong shade. Like, YouTube is, the internet is basically like video killing the radio star. <laughs> and I feel like <coughs> companies really aren't paying attention to that. Um, and then you have like the Kylie Jenners of the world who come in and disrupt online business. Like, she's not had any experience at all whatsoever in cosmetics, in the field of sales, retail. And I guess technically you could say that she's like selling herself on the show. But she comes in, creates a line, and it sells out in seconds. <laughs> like, stores can't keep up with that. Like, the makeup counter has had its day. And it's unfortunate. Companies can, you know, give great customer experience, this, that, and the third, but kids are now being born with like cell phones in their hands. Like, who doesn't want to go to Starbucks and get on your phone and drink a latte and look at like Pinterest and Instagram and Twitter and order, watch YouTube videos and agree with or obsess over YouTube makeup gurus and go by what they say. Like, it's all becoming virtual reality. And we're relying on baby boomers who are almost on their way out to support brick and mortar. These are like two things that are about to no longer exist. So like, Retail industry, what are you what are you gonna do? Like instead of making all of these beauty gurus, um, instead of giving them like a ton of money to promote your product, why don't you use that money to actually train the people that sell your product? Like Mac, wonderful, wonderful. Um, items that they sell, but what makes them different is their execution of a look. <laughs> if every line knew how to apply makeup like a MAC artist, they would all have a high demand just like MAC, but lines don't want to focus on that. I'm not sure why. 
like if NYX trained there, if they had somebody like at Walgreens or at Ulta, and they had artists that can do a look just like a Mac artist, like they would be so busy. Like NYX and Mac are practically like the same thing, different prices by a little bit, but. Mac artists always know how to beat a face. Like, if every line had people that knew how to beat a face, that's what would make a difference. So instead of giving this person on YouTube $500,000 to promote your products, but not exclusively, why not just train your people that sell your products to be great at applying makeup because what you're not going to get online is somebody actually beating your face or you know executing a great makeup look that's one thing that you cannot get virtually <clears throat> and why companies don't focus on that I don't I don't understand I really don't get it like why wouldn't you want Instagram makeup artists that know how to create amazing looks work for your counter. It's just, it's mind baffling. If, if I had a line, trust and believe that I would have people that knew how to execute a look selling my product. That's why Mac is like as amazing as it is. Not only do they sell amazing products but they have people that know how to put it on like pros so just the whole uh, internet bringing down brick and mortar businesses why are we not focusing more on the younger generation of customer like I know young girls come into the makeup counters and they feel probably intimidated and they don't want to be pressured into buying stuff that they don't want or they go in and somebody does their face but they don't come out looking like they um, wanted. Why are we not catering to them? Kylie's catering to them and guess what? Like she's selling out her products. I just, I don't understand where like the thought process is going when it comes to businesses. You're in business to make money, not lose it. And once clients start, um, once the client list can't be contacted anymore, what do you do? <laughs> like, I'm just, I just, I don't, it just doesn't make sense. These are just things that I think about. Just commentary on things that are happening. And it, it would be great to know what you guys think. Like, people are always gonna go to the mat counter. Like, no matter what. Why? Because their products from top to bottom always perform amazingly. But also, they have people that know how to do a look. Like, who's ever been disappointed by a MAC uh, makeover? I have not known one person. Yeah, they might have the reputation of being rude and condescending um, or mean but they do know how to create a flawless, beautiful look, re almost regardless of what like you ask um, to be done to your face. That skill, that's talent, it can be learned and they do have trainers. Um, so I just, I don't, I don't understand why, especially like, you know, larger companies wouldn't want to replicate that at all of their counters. I don't know. I need answers. Does anybody watch Sanders Kennedy? I 
like them. Um, some people say that like he says things without saying them and I kind of agree. I feel like he doesn't say them because he doesn't want to get in trouble. I mean, how many times are you going to get, I guess, notices or uh, threats or whatever? I don't know. Like, uh, just say it. Or use the word allegedly a lot, which I know he does, but maybe he doesn't say it often enough. Um, but I like his channel. It's, it's entertaining. I wish he would go more into depth about some of the stuff he talks about. Oops, my bad. Um, but yeah, this was fun. Um, food and drink were pretty decent. Conversation was great. Um, yeah, I know I don't have any makeup on, but I'm so tired of feeling like I have to have makeup on. Why? Like, what matters is what I'm saying, not, not how I look. Yes, there will be videos where I have makeup and hair and all that jazz on, but this is life. <laughs> You're not, this is, and it's my day off, girl, please. No, I'm not, not doing it. Not doing it. Uh, I'm chilling. Will I do productive things with my time today? I don't know. Maybe. Possibly. Honestly. Truly. <laughs> Joanne the Scammer is the business. Oh my god. I just... Oh my god. She's amazing. She is hilarious. Like, if you don't know who she is, which I need you to know who she is. Please YouTube her. Hilarious AF. Um, but yeah, I'm out. Um, please like, rate, subscribe, comment, um, suggest topics for me to talk about. 